Story mode is awful. It makes no sense. It is probably one of the worst written uh, stories I've ever played in a fighting game. And it's made even worse by the fact that, uh, unlike other fighting games, which the stories are nonsensical garbage and you expect them to be nonsensical garbage, this game has the illusion of presentation of being good, the story in this game, but it's absolute horse shit. Towers of Time are completely unfun. Nothing about them is rewarding at all. You work your ass off with these insane modifiers that make the game unfun. It's not even testing your skills, it's more testing your patience to earn shitty rewards that you don't even need and shouldn't even be in this game in the first place. Classic towers exist to let the game play itself for you so you can have the AI do it for you, but even then, you just... You don't, You still need to be there to babysit it, to hit the buttons to progress through the menu. At least make it auto-do that. There's no reason I should have to hit continue to the next fight for the AI that's playing the game for me. Fuck you. The Crypt is a total time sink, and it costs way too much for everything, number one. Number two, the fact that it costs you resources that you spend on chests to progress through the crypt at times is also ridiculous and is clearly there for them to make a profit some way or another from your fucking money even though you paid them sixty dollars for a finished video game the only thing that's fun in this game is fighting against other people that's the only thing now granted it's a fighting game that should be fun but like come on what the fuck why have all this shit? Why why did you ruin your game? What is wrong with you? Why how can you fail this bad at designing a game from the ground up? It's incredible. I've never seen anything like it from something that had so much promise. So yeah, the only thing that's any fun at all is fighting people uh which it should be because it's a fighting game. But even then, here's a little kicker for you. So as, the time, as of the time I'm making this video, as far as I know, and apparently other people have in this issue too, and no one seems to say otherwise, so I'm assuming it's true, there's no way for player two to use the customized va variations of your characters. So what is even the point? Also, by the way, if you want to play, uh, if you want to, you know, train for tournaments, don't even bother with this menu. You have to use the tournament menu. That way that you can uh, use the proper tournament variations that are going to be legal in professional play. Now, I don't give a fuck about professional play. I'm too much of a scrub to ever be actually any good at this game. But the point is, is why even have it a separate menu? Why even have that at all? That's just stupid. I know why they have it, so that tournaments remain fair and balanced, which makes sense. But at that point, you got to ask yourself, why have a mode that's unfair and unbalanced and have a mode that's fair and balanced and we should all be playing the same shit? That's stupid. Online is online. There's not much to say about that. AI battle. Okay, so the nice thing about this is you can fast forward through the fights because there's no fun in watching the game play itself. And even this, it takes forever to earn anything. You have to be on it in order to fight defend battles. At least I think so, because I haven't fought a single one yet. I don't know why no one wants to fight my team. I guess you guys are too fucking scared or something. But I'm joking, by the way. But still, AI battle is fucking lame. Why can't I just... Why can't I earn things by playing the game myself? Why do I have to earn things by letting the computer do it for me? That it's, I'm not mining Bitcoin over here. I bought a video game for $60. I'd like to play it. Thank you. Customize. The characters, all the skins are fucking worthless. They're all fucking pointless. And I'm going to show you why. Let's look at Sub-Zero. So the cool thing that you might be like, oh, wow, that's a... Hold on. Save the fucking variation. So the cool thing is you might be like, oh, wow, look at all these skins. That's a lot of different skins. You're being tricked, lads. You're being tricked. It's not a lot of different skins and costumes. There's essentially like four for each character, which is a decent amount, granted, but all of them, the, the bulk of them are just glorified palette swaps that make no difference whatsoever. And 
Also, I know I complain about this in my beta impressions, but come on! Red Sub-Zero? What is that? Why? And also, you know what? Uh, where, where's the one that really pissed me off? This is one that really, really pissed me off. Fuck you! Fuck you, Netherrealm! I want to reign in the game! And this is the best I get? Is this fucking costume for Sub-Zero? Fuck you! I'm sick of this shit. So, now, the other thing about these costumes is, again, there's different levels of rarity, so you have to work your ass off to get the, the really hard ones, as you can imagine. Like, these Elder Skins found in the crypt, I bet they're in fucking chests hidden in the bum fuck of nowhere that are way too expensive, that cost fucking hearts, which you have to do fatalities for, which you earn one heart at a time, which is ridiculous. And then the ones in the Towers of Time are not even worth the effort. That They're headache-inducing. The Towers of Time are absolutely headache-inducing. They're not worth any, eff any of your time at all. It Because even then, when you do the Towers of Time, it's not like, oh, you're going to get the Elder Sub-Zero skin. No, you're going to get this shitty fucking... What's that, AI? But yeah, this shitty fucking Sub-Zero common skin. Oh, fucking frustrating. The gear... At least the gears don't have rarity, but between all of these different masks, now it's cool aesthetic-wise, I'm sure, when you're looking at it close up, but when you're in the fucking match, you can't pick out the difference between any of these fucking matches, masks and appreciate how cool they look. Okay, maybe this one, because it stands out a bit more than all the rest, but still. And the fact of the matter is that I have to... Waste my life in the Tower of Time, or waste, or, well, waste my life in the Crypt, or test my patience in the Towers of Time to get any of these. Just, it makes this a no deal for me. Fuck you. Also, Fatalities, I guess I unlock Sub-Zero, so I can't really show it, but yeah, you gotta go through the Crypt for those. Now, that wouldn't be too bad, but again, everything in the Crypt is designed intentionally to be overpriced in regards to what you're getting. You can honestly spend like 14000 on a fucking chest. I, I did this yesterday. I spent like 14000 on a chest. You know what was inside? Two consumables and a fucking icon. Fuck you. Icon shouldn't even be in the goddamn crypt. That shit should be just available from the start. Anyway. Oh, and also, you unlock... You know how you used to unlock concept art? Where it would be like, okay, cool, you unlock all the concept art for that character at once. Right? Well, as far as I can tell, you unlock each piece of concept art individually. So, that's even more filler stuff for the crypt designed to make you waste the hard-earned in-game currency that you earned way too slow in the first place. Just so that, inevitably... They will inevitably put in microtransactions for the coins. You can mark my words. They aren't going to do it today. They aren't going to do it tomorrow. They might not even do it a month from now. But a year from now, a year and a half from now, you bet your sweet ass it's going to be in this fucking game. And there's going to be one for souls. And there's going to be ones for hearts. And you can always pay the more premium price for all the time crystals too. Because I'm sure they're going to change the way those work entirely as they add in the new microtransactions too which will essentially in a way because free to play games now this isn't a free to play game but it's trying to be a free to play game while still charging you sixty dollars for it free to play games like to do this shit all the time where they introduce a new type of currency and then your old currency you can't earn it anymore the way you used to earn it and then you're left with like fucking ten time crystals that you can't spend anywhere uh. So yeah, the, so the only good things in this game, the only good things is the actual fighting, the actual combat is fun, provided that you actually know what you're doing. Now that I've messed around with Sub-Zero enough to actually know what I'm doing with them, it's quite enjoyable fighting other people. And then also, uh, you know, the, this game has an excellent tutorial. This is probably one of the best tutorials I've ever fucking seen in a fighting game. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, it goes over everything from the from the very basics to all the different uh, abilities and stuff that you need in the game, like how to do all the different shit, like you know, flawless blocking, uh, breakaways, 
dodge escapes, roll escapes, all that kind of shit. It even goes over frame data, teaches you how to build combos. Now, I already know how to do a lot of this stuff, so I didn't learn all that much from it. But, anybody who's actually interested in learning a fighting game, this is probably the best tutorial I have ever seen for a fighting game. However, it does have some problems, in that, first of all, some of these are glitched, and they don't work as intended. Sometimes the tooltips are wrong, sometimes when you watch the demonstration from the AI, the AI can't even do the combo correctly, so you can't even mimic what they're doing. And then also, uh, another big problem is there's like one or two where you're supposed to connect with a move, but it won't let you move, but the move, you're, the way it positions you is you're too far away for the move to connect. So you have to be real creative to get around that. I was able to do all of them, but some of them, I had to find some real creative ways to actually complete. Also, character lessons, unfortunately though, kind of dropped the ball. And the reason why is because it just goes over the bare basics of the characters. Now, that's nice. It's nice to know, you know, like for instance, it's nice that there's a little tooltip telling me that double axe slam is safe on block or it has a frame advantage of minus two or whatever the fuck. But... It's just pales in comparison to the rest of the actual tutorial. Like, I don't know, what about combo trials or something? At least, you know, get people learning basic combos. That'd be nice in the tutorial. It's that way, instead of having to go into training mode and bang my head against the wall, figuring out combos with each character, I can play the, the simple trial mode, learn bread and butter combos for everybody that way. I think that would actually be a great addition to this game. I think they should put that in this game, in the tutorial. Expand these. Make a basic tutorial and then an advanced tutorial, where you take what you learn in the basic tutorial for each character, and then you do kind of like a combo trial thing, where you do harder and harder combos, just like how it works in Capcom fighting games, just how it works in all sorts of other fighting games, any fighting game that has a combo trial system. I think it would be really beneficial for this mode. Because, and the reason I think that would be really beneficial is because instead of, like I said, like, I don't know how to use Liu Kang at all. If I want to use Liu Kang for story mode or I want to beat his tower and not have the AI play the game for me, I have to take Liu Kang into, into training mode and go over all his different strings and figure out how they all piece together. That That's a lot of time and effort. And I'm not even getting rewarded for that time and effort in practice mode. So instead, what I would love is if in the tutorials there was some basic bread and, butter, bread and butter combos for Liu Kang that I could learn and I could do right here in this mode and I could practice till my heart's content. And then, once I do the trial there, I know what I should be trying to hammer out consecutively and perform in practice mode. That way, I don't fuck it up nearly as much. But anyway. Whew. What a pain in the ass this game is. This is... It hurts me. It honestly hurts me. Oh, and don't even get me started on the fucking store. Don't even get me on the start of this fucking store. Where I... I've been playing this game... For fucking... What is this? The third day now that it's been out? I don't even fucking know. I only got 408 time crystals. Granted, I haven't been playing as religiously as I should. Because it's just not fun. Nothing. The only thing that's fun is fighting other people. The only thing that... And it's a fighting game. And that should be the most fun thing in the fighting game. But it shouldn't be the only fun thing in the fighting game. Especially a NetherRealm game. Where they have this reputation of having a lot of other fun shit. In addition to the fucking online verses and the local verses. What the fuck? So yeah, that's my rant. Stay tuned for the full review.